Ready? And action! I like world creation. I think that's world building. It's really interesting, but the idea was making a, a family movie that has a dark, quirky edge to it. Here we go. Miguel's vision is extremely sharp and not intimidated by tough themes, difficult shooting schedules, or incredibly complicated effects shots. The project originated with Miguel Sapochnik, the director, who had developed it with the writers Ivor Powell and Craig Luck. Craig had actually started it as a short story, and they partnered to write the script and brought it to Miguel. Miguel as a director is an, is an incredible visionary because his visual style fit an epic movie so perfectly. When the movie begins, it's 10 years after this post-apocalyptic event, and we wanted to try and do something that was literally focused on the relationship between the characters. Finch is an engineer and a computer scientist and a developer of software. And as far as his part of the world, he's the only guy left. We're in a facility that operated at a soundstage, but when Finch has to escape from this part of the world, then everything else that was outdoors, we shot literally, you know, outdoors. So he has this escape vehicle that he's slowly been putting together, and they gotta pile into the family RV and take off. When we're trying to create a world for these characters to exist in, the RV is a central character. We spend maybe 50, 60% of the film in a road trip. It's something that can live, it has a little kitchen, and if I jack it up and I put it on big old monster truck wheels, then I'm gonna roll over any obstacle I can. We had fireman suits and hazmat suits and all different kinds of outdoor boots and gloves and helmets and goggles. And it was cool to see Tom think about what would Finch do with this stuff. I had a lot of costume fittings and meetings. And I was very glad to be in my ultraviolet protection suit there because everybody else was just wind burned. And I kind of got to sit inside with an air conditioned helmet even when we were outside. When Tom puts it on, it almost instantly feels Iconic. Get your elbows off the table. Get your elbows off the table. Seamus, who is the acting dog that plays Goodyear, I mean, he's just an award winner as far as charm goes. Letting him do his own thing gets you far more interesting stuff, and then he also has these great eyebrows. So anytime he kind of raises his eyebrow in one direction, it feels like a really big thing. We hired the best dog trainer in the business in Mark Forbes, and we basically auditioned a bunch of dogs. We narrowed it down to two of our favorite dogs, and then we had Tom Hanks come in and help us decide on Seamus. Seamus had verve. He carried with him a type of mysterious gravitas. The projection, I think, that comes along with a man, and his dog in this case, is that the audience begins to supply Seamus's dialogue. All right, you're next. Come here, dog breath. Come on. They begin to understand what, in this case, Goodyear is thinking and what his responses are to it. Oh. Where's your ball? Is it here? I'd like to think that as the actor, I bring a number of goods to the mix. Caleb, as Jeff, brings a substantial amount of elements to it that I cannot provide. And what was missing from the movie, from the two of us, Seamus provided. Now it is a classic triangle of life forms. It is the canine life form, the human life form, and Caleb Landry Jones as Jeff, this robot, this companion, actually. <laughs> Would you like me to drive? Oh, you just learned how to walk. On this movie, we were introduced to the project by Tom Meyer, the production designer, 
who came up with the designs for Dewey and for Jeff. Dewey is a much simpler character. Jeff is really Finch, and he learns throughout the whole movie how to become a man, whereas Dewey will always only ever be this character that can't really emote. Jeff was really a great design and something that was ground in the real world. So his head is the top of a welding gas tank. A lot of his body parts from finding things that you would use in a real workshop. Jeff is six foot six inches tall. So we created stilts. So that the interesting part of the performance of Jeff is the gait of the walk. We got so used to working with Caleb and we used mocap, a Moven suit that records his movements. That's been a really interesting and experimental thing. And one of the other things that Miguel told me when we were designing Jeff is can opener, right in his chest, right where his heart needs to be. His heart is the well-being of the dog. These robots take on a certain humanity that other robots in the past certainly don't seem to have had. And I think you get that from the performance of Puppeteers, Caleb and the CG Jeff. Tornado detection. Shelter advised. It was so windy that day that we had wind machines that lay unused because we had about a 50 to 60 mile an hour wind that was blowing all the sand. The great thing about CGI now is you can do anything. And I didn't remember Caleb in costume. I was just seeing Jeff as Jeff. Get back in here. What we have to create with visual effects is the artificial intelligence robot based on Caleb's performance and kind of give the world a taste of the promise of what future technology is, but then have this really dark world that's very hard to survive in. I learned to talk dog. The beautiful thing that the film does that I think the audience recognizes is that it is not human to be alone. It is not human to be a solo being. We must have company because in company we find companionship, we find love. That's the high country, man, when you can capture that on film.